A while ago, I asked you to send in pictures of your poison dart frog vivariums, and today we are going to review some of them. So hopefully you can learn a thing or two, or get some inspiration for your next vivarium build. This was live streamed on this channel about a month ago, and if you for some reason want to watch the full 2 hour unedited VOD, it will be linked in the description down below. The stream was a bit too long to fit into one video, so there is a part 2 coming out in the near future, so stay tuned for that, and subscribe so you won't miss out. Uh, hello everyone, and uh, welcome to the stream. Today we will be reviewing uh, your poison dart frog vivariums and some other vivariums, because I thought that would be a fun idea. So today we have 18 submissions of vivariums that we have to review live, which is going to take quite a while, but I think we're going to get through it eventually, hopefully. So I think we just head straight into the first vivarium. This should be working right now, I think. I have a message to this one that I'm going to read. Hello, my name is Chris Christian and I live in the States and here are a few of my tanks. First three picks attached house my four Phylobatus Arutainia. Next two house my pair of Ligodactylus Conraui Microgeckos. Next is a picture of my pair of Ranitomia Uacaria gold legged vivarium and a picture of one of them. So I'm pretty sure this is the tank that houses the Phylobatus Arutania, uh, a really beautiful frog species similar to the Vitatus that I keep. Uh, I would love to keep them at some point, but I'm currently focusing a bit more on the thumbnails if I'm expanding my collection. And I'm not sure if this was the Uacariae gold leg tank or if it was the micro geckos. So here's one of the Ranitimea Uacariae, and this is one of the Ligodactylus Kanraui. And here are the beautiful Phylobatus Aurotania. Really amazing frogs, in my opinion. I think this is a very solid vivarium. I think I'm mostly going to focus on this vivarium because it's like the biggest one and he sent multiple ones so I can't really speak about all of them. I usually do, do the same kind of background with just Hygrelon and nothing else and it's very effective. I, I do the same thing, I also don't really like to uh, put a lot of effort into my backgrounds because that just takes up a lot of time. Um, and when it grows in it's really just fine. Uh, I'm not sure what this uh, very fast growing plant in the middle is, but it, it's a nice one for sure. So yeah, this is the first vivarium. Uh, so what do we think about this one? And I think this is a very solid one. For the frog's sake, there's definitely nothing to complain about or anything like that. Definitely great for the frogs with all of this dense planting because they can just get away very deep inside of this tank if they want to. Definitely a great plant selection, maybe like a 7 out of 10 or something. Time for the next vivarium I think. So this one was also sent in a long time ago, uh, not in a galaxy far far away but definitely a while ago. Uh, so this is a very interesting one I think for a few reasons. Obviously this is not the finished product, but this is one of the pictures from when it was being set up. and. I'm going to read what he wrote. This is my current project, it's a converted wardrobe. It will house an Amazon tree boa along with a few dart frogs. So the Amazon tree boa and dart frog cohabitation is actually not as outrageous as most of you probably think at first. It's actually a fairly common combination to keep bigger arboreal uh, snake species together with dart frogs because the dart frogs are really tiny and the snake species can't really do anything towards the dart frogs, they don't see them as food. So um, this has a good chance of working, however I would be very careful about frog proofing this lamp. Here is apparently a much newer picture of the same vivarium, but I didn't get a new overview shot. I only got like this overview shot and then some really close ones and various ones throughout the building process. It's a very interesting like technical build and stuff. I would like to see a picture from this state of the vivarium, of the whole vivarium, because I'm kind of missing that. So I think from what I can see it's looking pretty good. I think it's like a very impressive thing to successfully convert this wardrobe kind of thing to a dart frog vivarium. I would not be able to do that myself. Uh, so for that I think it's like, I think it's also worthy of a 7. I think the planting is something too spectacular, but I would most likely have a different comment if I could actually see the whole finished product instead of just this overview shot. Yeah, I, I can't really say much to be honest, uh, because this is very early, so I think this also gets a 7. I think we're going to be handing out a lot of 7s today. Let's go on to the next one. Uh, this is the third enclosure. Hello, this is my paludarium with 4 Phylobetes Vitatus super spots, getting 20 or so eggs per week from them. Uh, so this is the setup, and this is a second picture. No, that's not a second picture. <laughs> 
This is a second picture uh, where you can also see the water feature a bit more. So I think my main comment on this vivarium is that uh, there's a lot of moss and very little leaf litter. It's not like dangerous to have a lot of moss and stuff like that, uh, but I would most probably consider adding like a bit more leaf litter to half the ground but it's definitely it's definitely fine i mean if you're getting 20 eggs per week from them then you're probably doing something correct a lot of people if you're from dartfrog facebook will probably freak out about the water feature i can say that dartfrogs can swim it is an issue in some tanks that it takes up a lot of their uh, usable space but in this case i definitely don't think that's an issue because they do have plenty of space left uh, so i'm not going to drag it down from that or anything Uh, but personally, I would most likely remove a bit of the moss from the ground if this was my tank. Uh, but aside from that, it's really beautiful, I think. This Risha Hieroglyphica, I'm pretty sure, is most likely going to outgrow the Vivarium. Uh, but I can't really complain about that because I just bought one from my most recent tank anyways, myself. But it's still something that can be a bit annoying. Yeah, I think this tank looks really awesome. I think it's like... An 8 out of 10 maybe. Uh, I would kind of still like to drag it down a notch because of the huge amount of moss on the ground, uh, but it's a really nice tank. I just noticed one of the frogs are actually up here. I didn't see that one before. Yeah, 7.5 out of 10 I think for this one. The ratings aren't anything too serious. It's, it's really just something I mention for fun because that's kind of a good, it's a good clickbait on YouTube and stuff. That's the main reason I think. Let me see if I can find the next person here. This is actually a Swedish guy, which is also very fun, so I will have to translate the message and everything. Here we have it. This is my first Dortfrog vivarium. Uh, it houses four Dendrobates auratus, uh, and the vivarium is 80 by 45 by 35 centimeters. Uh, so here is the setup. I personally hate using all the aquariums myself. I had one and it was extremely annoying to take care of. If it works for you, then go ahead. I just thought it was very annoying personally. I do think the lid situation here is very interesting. It's kind of like mesh all over the top. I'm not really sure what's going on with that. Oh wait, it's like, are these like lids for plastic tubs? So you have like the lids here and the mesh for extra security, I suppose. I feel like this lid mechanism is very annoying to take care of most likely, uh, but the tank itself looks really good, I think. It's a very like simplistic tank, but it definitely does the job. I mean, you have the plants so the dart frogs can get a lot of coverage. I think this is a great example of how you don't really need a background if you just overplant it so there's a lot of foliage still for them. So I think I would give this one like a 6 or something. Definitely nothing to complain about for the frog's sake. Let's see if I can find the next one. Here are some pictures of my vivarium. It's my first and only so it means a lot to me. So far its only inhabitants are some tropical grey wood lice and springtails but I would love a group of dart frogs in there at some point. I'm thinking Phylobetes vitatus after I saw your video about them but I'm open to, to any other suggestions. So um, I think Phylobetes vitatus are great beginner frogs. Uh, I think the only like catch to them is that they can be a bit shy at times. I mean I still love my vitatus, they are really amazing frogs, but if it's your only frog species then maybe I would consider getting a slightly bolder one because it's very anxiety inducing uh, when you're a beginner to have a frog that's really shy and you don't see the meat and stuff like that. So if you go for like a Tinctorius or a Terribilis or something then you will have a guaranteed bold frog. So that can be a bit convenient, uh, but Vitalis are great as well if you have the patience. Anyway, so the Vivarium does look a bit on the dry side, but I definitely have a feeling that um, the humidity increased over time. Oh, right! You can't see the vivarium, I'm so sorry. Uh, here it is. Yeah, so the vivarium looks a bit on the dry side, uh, but I think that's probably something that was increased over time. Uh, I think the tank, look tank looks really good. One thing that I really like about it is the fact that the, uh, there's a lot of uh, usage of different levels with hardscape and substrate behind them and stuff like that. But I think that's something that a lot of us can take some inspiration from. It's a really nice way of planting your vivariums in my opinion. One thing that I do notice is all the scratches in um, the glass doors. I'm assuming this is plexiglass because of all of these scratches. You won't regret getting some normal glass instead. Uh, I think this is like an 8 out of 10 probably. It's a bit on the like freshly planted side but it definitely has a lot of potential with all of these interesting hardscape elements and stuff like that. So 
time for the next one. This guy sent two of their vivariums. So this one houses a few Dendrobates leucomelas and it's a Yule Aquarium. Uh, so there are a few more pictures here. I uh, have some beautiful moss growth here on the cork bark and stuff like that. And here is also one of the frogs that you can see. So I think the main thing that I'm reacting to is the fact that this cork bark panel is just like submerged underwater and I have a feeling that this will be kind of soaked and most likely like break down and fall apart after some time. That's one of like the... Uh, the disadvantages of having a paludarium is that there are those risks. Uh, but aside from that, I don't think like the size of the water feature is a problem in this one, unlike some other paludariums, because it's it definitely doesn't take up all the usable space. If it was my vivariums, I would just like fill it with substrate, substrate because I think a water feature doesn't really add much, but that's a very subjective opinion. Uh, so yeah, I think this is a really beautiful tank. I'm not sure about the sustainability of this whole construction here. I suppose you will figure that out in time. I think it's also like 7, 8, probably. Yeah, 8 out of 10, I think. Uh, so this is another different vivarium from uh, the same person. Uh, so this one houses uh, fire-bellied toads instead, uh, the Bombina orientalis. I'm a huge fan of this one, uh, definitely. And I think this is uh, probably going to be the first 9 out of 10 today. These are... Um, these are more aquatic frogs, these are obviously not dart frogs, so they definitely appreciate the huge water feature. Uh, and you have some nice moss growth here in the waterfall and everything like that. Yeah, I think this is a very nice looking setup. Yeah, they, they will have to be trimmed, uh, but I don't think that's a bad thing. And I mean, the frogs, they love an overgrown tank. So I think this is definitely a 9 out of 10, uh, possibly even like a 9.5. For a 10, we're saving it up for something really special if there is going to be one. Let's see, next one. This is a tarantula vivarium. This is my Acanthoscuria geniculata enclosure. She's a juvenile and her name is Silk. As you probably can see, I made the enclosure myself and I have used buttons as locks. Uh, I definitely think this is a really good looking enclosure to be a tarantula enclosure and it's a lot more effort than I would put into my tarantula enclosures for my uh, spiderlings and stuff. So uh, for those of you who don't know, tarantulas, they really don't need that much much room. They basically just dig a burrow and stay there. Yeah, I think this is really good. I'm probably not gonna raid it, but it's definitely really good and it's a lot more effort than I would put into my tarantula vivariums, at least for the baby tarantulas. Next one! Yeah, this is a very interesting one actually. It's my first terrarium and it's now nine months old. I got all my plants from some local garden center. Thus, I only have a small collection of suitable plants to choose from. Uh, the terrarium houses two male leucomeles. Also, some leaf litter will be added soon as the old one decomposed already. Here you can see it from a slightly different angle. Uh, and here are the frogs, obviously. Uh, so, I think this is a very interesting setup. Uh, these are definitely some nice bromeliads. Uh, the Vrishia Splendens or Vrishia Era or something like that. I think they are among the best ones you can find. He said he will add more leaf litter and I think that would be great because it doesn't really look like there is a lot there. I can see why the pine bark is sticking to the frog skin. But I mean, aside from that, I think it's a really nice setup. I could not tell that you had got these plants from a garden center if I would have guessed. Aside from like the phytonia here, uh, because that, that's kind of a giveaway. But aside from that, they look like plants that you could get like from some uh, vivarium store. So uh, one thing that I... Uh, uh, personally do in my newer vivariums is that I take the cork bark panels and I kind of scratch the uh, the surface of it because here it's it's very clear like this is where you broke it off and this is how it looked when you got it just like the flat surface so I would definitely try to like scratch the surface uh, if I did a different one uh, but yeah pretty great looking tank in my opinion this is definitely a 7 out of 10 I'm considering if it's an 8 but I think like the simplistic background probably keep but you have you have really great depth as well with uh, uh, all of these branches and the plants, so I'm going to give it a 7.5, I think. Let's see here if we can bring up the next ones. Hi, Emmanuel. I'm a herper from Sweden and I've been enjoying your dart frog videos for a while now. You are so very close to getting me to jump on the dart frog bandwagon. 
so here we can see the setups. It's a bit, you know, a pick and mix like different sizes and stuff, but uh, I think that's a nice aesthetic still. So we have the two leopard geckos, uh, crested geckos, and Felsima clemeri, I think. And also some homemade signs. You can see that this guy is Swedish and seemed like Shakespeare. Yeah, I think that was the overview. And then we also have uh, the tanks, which is, of course, the most interesting part. So I think this was the crested gecko vivarium. And here is a Felsuma vivarium again. This one is really nice looking, very like overgrown kind of aesthetic which I definitely like. Let's see here's a leopard gecko vivarium. I'm not sure if we are going to rate all of these ones but I think the crested gecko tank is uh, a really great one. The background is like really amazing so it's like at least a 9 out of 10. I'm not sure maybe the planting is holding it back a bit because it seems to be just golden pothos. I guess this is a philodendron melanochrysum or a very big philodendron mycons I'm not sure. There is a surveillance camera for them so you can check on your animals when you're not at home, which is very interesting. I haven't really considered that. Uh, great looking tanks, definitely a 9 out of 10 for the Crested Gecko Vivarium, and uh, great job. That was it for episode 1 of reviewing your Dartfog Vivariums. As I mentioned earlier, there is a part 2 coming out in the near future, but I might make more of these videos in the future if this becomes popular. Make sure to let me know in the comment section what you think. However, there will of course still be tutorials and other videos coming out in between them. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you won't miss out on any future uploads. As always, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.